We're back now at 809 with a husband and father of four in Texas and the story behind how he landed on the sex offender registry. We're going to talk to him and his wife in a moment, but first, here's NBC's Tom Trump. <laughs> Frank Rodriguez is a husband, a father of four, Good job, man. Good job. and also a registered sex offender. What did it say on that registry when, when you look up Frank Rodriguez, <clears throat> Caldwell, Texas? Frank Rodriguez, uh, sexual assault of a child. It's hard to have to explain to our children why their daddy's a sex offender. Why he's on that registry goes back more than 15 years, when Frank was a high school senior, a football star in Caldwell, Texas, dating his then-girlfriend, Nikki, a freshman cheerleader. It wasn't uncommon for freshmen to date seniors. But then the couple decided to take their relationship to another level. We talked about it, decided we wouldn't have sex. Frank was 19. Nikki 15, but the age of consent in Texas was 17. After an angry argument, Nikki's mom reported Frank to the authorities. He was arrested and charged with statutory rape. As part of a plea deal to avoid jail time, he pled guilty, was sentenced to seven years probation, and had to register as a sex offender. I don't know what to do. I was like, wow, well, am I ever going to get this here again? When Nikki was old enough, they got married. Today, they're together with their four girls. But Frank is still saddled with his sex offender status. He can't even coach his girls' soccer team because he'd be near underaged kids. I understand punishment, breaking the law. You know, you have to be punished for it. But for the rest of your life. There may be some hope for the family. Starting in September, Texas will modify its sex offender law. Frank will be able to petition the state to get him off that sex offender registry. Oh, look that up. Attorneys say states across the country should take another look at their sex offender laws. We may be concerned about our kids getting involved too young, but that's different from criminalization and branding them a sex offender. I think we've suffered long enough. I've been on the registry over half my life. In the eyes of the law, what Frank and Nikki did years ago was wrong. They say if that's the case, they're certainly not alone. Tan Trung, NBC News, Caldwell, Texas. Frank and Nikki Rodriguez's story is detailed in this month's issue of Marie Claire. They are here along with Robin Sachs, a former sex crimes prosecutor and now a criminal defense attorney. Good morning to all of you. So this happened, you were 19, you were 15. Did you imagine when you went through this and lived through this episode in your life back at 19 years old that 15 or 20 years later this would still be something you were dealing with? No, I, I had no idea. I, I figured uh, it would, uh, you know, I would have a go through a, a probation period where I would few years. I, I had no idea that it would follow me for the rest of my life. Clearly, this has changed your life and the way you carry yourself, the way you present yourselves to other yourself to others, and the way they present themselves to you. What what's been the greatest impact? The greatest impact, uh, well. Constantly feeling like you have to explain yourself to everyone that you meet, everyone that you come in contact with. Um, I was wondering if people have seen him on the registry. Talking about you behind your back. Do right. all of your friends know about this, or might some be finding out about this based on the magazine article in this interview? We thought that everyone knew, but once the article came out, we realized there were a lot of people in our hometown that had no idea. You have four children, Frank. Um, they have friends. And when their parents hear about this story, do you have people in your neighborhood who don't want their children to be around you? Well, I haven't, I haven't came across anybody who's said anything about it. Or I wouldn't know. Maybe. We wondered at one time there was a neighbor who their kids came over every day to play, and then all of a sudden they just stopped coming. And I wondered if they had. It's the kind of second guessing you constantly yeah, find yourselves right. doing. The, the, this story is going to generate a lot of comments. And, and there are going to be two sides to this. Some people are going to say, yes, what happened back then was wrong. He did something that he should not have done, but it was consensual sex, and people should be allowed to move on because they are a legitimate couple. They've gotten married and have four kids. And there are others who are going to say, you know what? The law is the law is the law, and he broke it, and the law says he should register as a sex offender. Do you understand both sides of this? Yeah, I understand both sides. 
It shouldn't be a one-size-fits-all. So in other words, the law, in your opinion, is being placed on this too specifically. Yes. You're a former sex crimes prosecutor, Robin. What's your opinion on this? Well, and I actually take an issue. The law is not the law is the law is the law. There are people out there who have discretion and choices in enforcing the law. That's cops, that's DAs, that's judges. And in a situation when I was in the DA's office, I would look at a situation like this and I would say this is a mom who's trying to use the legal system to parent instead of having a conversation. And once you open that Pandora's box of the legal system, then there are consequences. And the consequence here has been a scarlet letter that's following him in a case where no one would expect someone in this situation to be registered. And, and so you don't feel that he should be on the same list as someone who forcibly rapes a woman or a child, which he's on the same list. That, that's exactly right. And the idea behind the list is it's supposed to show who the worst of the worst people are out there. It's a tool that we as parents use to protect our kids. And it's supposed to signify this person is a danger to our society. Watch out. When someone is looking at that list, they are not expecting and Mr. Rodriguez to be there. All right. Well, we're going to ask our audience what they think about this. And Frank and Nikki, I appreciate you being here, and Robin as well. And we're going to find out more about what our audience feels tomorrow. So the question is, do you think Frank should be labeled a sex offender? Log on to today.com, take part in our online poll, and we'll share the re results of that tomorrow morning.